we talk in the quality on T or BT, uh, and uh, we, uh, we look forward to the results of Resect and due course. I'd like to now ask uh, Jeremy Teo from Hong Kong to deliver his talk on on-block techniques and bladder cancer. Jeremy. Hi, my name is Jeremy Teo from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. First of all, thank you very much for the invitation. It is my great pleasure to talk about the on-block techniques in bladder cancer. A bit of history, conventional TRBT was first introduced back in 1926. It is a minimally invasive procedure and is the current gold standard for the diagnosis and initial treatment of bladder cancer. But what we observe is that the cancer control of normal invasive bladder cancer is quite unsatisfactory. One year recurrence rate ranging from 15 to 61 percent, five year recurrence rate up to 78 percent. Therefore, there are many different adjunct treatments that we can consider in order to optimize the cancer control. And most of the time, patients will need repeated cystoscopy in order to detect any disease recurrence. So I always try to think, are there, are there any problems with the conventional approach? First of all, the first main issue is that during resection, we resect the tumor in a top-down approach, peaceful manner. It's actually quite difficult to ascertain a complete tumor resection, and it's highly dependent on the surgeon's experience. And because these specimens are fragmented, it's basically impossible to assess margin. Therefore, it is really difficult to ensure a complete resection just by histology. Secondly, during the procedure, when we resect the tumor in a peaceful manner, there will be a lot of floating tumor cells within the bladder. There's always a theoretical risk of seeding of these tumor cells back to the bladder wall, leading to early disease recurrence. Back in 1980, on blood resection has been proposed as an alternative technique in resecting the tumor. By resecting the tumor in one piece, we try to avoid fragmentation, minimizing chance of replantation and the specimen remains intact for a proper histological assessment. Therefore, any complete resection can be ensured by the presence of a clear resection margin. For those who did not have any experience in doing envelope resection, just a simple video uh, showing the principles in doing envelope resection, small tumor of the left lateral wall. First of all, I will mark the intended incision circumferentially, about five millimeter from the visible tumor edge. I will use the coagulation mode to mark this margin, which will aid to the subsequent incision. Um, during the procedure, we'll try to keep the bladder slightly descended because this will really aid your subsequent incision. And so once you have prepared the margins, then we'll proceed with the incision. Usually we start with the margin nearest to you, the, the, the distal margin, and then we we'll incise it with an intermittent burst technique. Um, and then because the bladder is slightly stent, you can see that the mucosa actually will tear apart as you tap on the pedal. And uh, you can actually use the resection lobe to push the tissue, soft tissue, uh, mobile tissue. These are the mucosa and the submucosa. The crossing fibers below these are the muscle. These are usually more, more fixed to the, to the resection bed. And uh, I usually use the insulated part, the yellow part here, to push against the tumor to avoid injuring the specimen inadvertently and preserving the specimen for a good histological assessment. Once you have incised the margin circumferentially, you can see that the tumor will shrink into the middle. And then subsequently, you can try to deal with the central part, either with an integrate or retrograde approach. You can see that I'm trying to manipulate uh, using the recession loop, say I'm pushing the tumor, therefore I can see where the attachment below is, and then proceed with the excision here. If you are able to do it properly, you should end up with a good specimen like this. So basically, um, I will try to pin the mucosa against the foam board uh, so that it's well oriented. The pathologist will know about the orientation, and then he or she can prepare the margins uh, by inking it with different colors, and then uh, the different blocks can be prepared, and usually will end up with a good histological assessment like this one. 
So one of the questions that has been frequently asked is how applicable and generalizable is ombud resection in our real life practice? Um, so um, Hugh and I actually published a paper on this. We tried to implement ombud resection as a primary treatment routinely in our clinical practice. And uh, we focus on normal invasive layer cancer because this is really what this procedure, this technique is really intended to cure in patients with muscle failure disease, any endoscopic procedure cannot really ensure a complete resection. These patients will need radical treatment anyway. So in this particular paper, we focus on those uh, patients who are having non-muscular invasive blood cancer. So basically, we looked into 164 patients who tried to implement ombud resection routinely. We were able to do ombud resection in 99 patients um, and um, subsequently, there are some patients who had muscle invasive blood cancer, so they're excluded because even if we do TRPT, it's not definitive treatment. We exclude the patient who requires cystectomy. And at the end of the day, we still have about 36 patients who are unable to undergo ombud resection because of technical issues and underwent TRPT in a conventional manner. And basically, if we stratified by the tumor size, we found that the success rate is quite high, um, more than 90% when the tumor size is really small. But say, if it is less than three centimeter, then the success rate of ombud resection is about 84%. Unfortunately, when the tumor size is more than 3%, the chance of a successful ombud resection is just near 30%. Most of the time, you can still excise the tumor in one piece, but the problem is, you may not be able to take it out in, in one piece. You may, not, you may need to take it out in multiple pieces, therefore making, making ombud resection not feasible. And we do multivariate analysis. Tumor size is obviously the major um, factor that is associated with uh, failure of ombud resection. But I hope that we can try to think a bit more about this issue large bladder tumors when we cannot do ombud resection is really a big limitation uh, in my opinion a few things that we need to consider number one large bladder tumors more than three centimeter these are the tumors which are actually more likely to be muscle invasive blood cancer so even if we can do ombud resection these patients we need radical treatment anyway in this procedure uh, what we need is actually proper staging so during the ombud resection, if we are able to resect it in one piece, even if we take it out in multiple pieces, the staging part should be fine. So I think the limitation is actually not as big as we think it is. And the truth is that we cannot be really sure intraoperatively whether the patient is having a muscle invasive disease or a non-muscle invasive blood cancer. So I always try to do ombud resection, hoping to ensure a complete local resection and hoping the histology comes back to be normal severe disease. Again, during the procedure, we excise in one piece, even if we take it out in multiple pieces, I believe the benefit of ensuring complete local resection can still be preserved. So in my practice, I try to do the procedure as on block as reasonably achievable and I believe this is the best way to go. Of course, there will be some challenging cases, so I hope to take this opportunity to show you two cases which are quite uh, challenging. First one, this is actually a live demonstration in the, S in the SIUE grand round, 78-year-old man, BCG intolerant, recurrent high-grade non-muscle invasive blood cancer. When I put in the endoscope, um, actually, with the white light cystoscopy, you can't see uh, major tumors. But once I have switched to the NBI mode, then you will be able to realize actually a large area over the left lateral wall is actually quite diseased. And these are very representative of CIS changes. And because these, this type of tumor is very flat, it's very soft, it's not big, sets out of tumor. So I still try my best to do ombud resection. Of course, in big uh, areas like this one, it will be more difficult, but still, I mean, it's feasible. And because these tumors are flat and soft, 
even if the surface area is very big, you will still be able to flush the tumor in one piece easily. And uh, as you can see, I'm trying to use the loop to push the tumor up and then excise um, the bottom part here. And you can see the crossing fibers below. And uh, just to show you how the resection bed looks like, so basically quite a big area. We try to resect down to the muscle layer in every bit of the resection bed. So at the end of the day, our pathology came back to be high-grade non-muscle invasive blood, blood cancer with size changes. Very interestingly, the margins came back to be clear, and the patient uh, one year down the line is still currently in a disease remission. Second case, big tumor. Initially, uh, when I looked into the cystoscopy report, it's supposed to be a small tumor. Uh, but when I went in, I, I, I saw that it's actually quite a big one. Sessile tumor over the right posterior lateral wall. I believe it's not possible to do ovary resection. But what I did, I resected the top, the exophytic part in a peaceful manner. And then I resect the base with ombud resection. And because it's a lateral wall tumor, there's actually a, an arterial jerk when excised. And therefore, what I did here, I reached the margin, the junction between the submucosa and the muscle. You can see, because of a jerk, I tried to do some blunt dissection. I'm, I'm able to push, to tear the tumor away from the underlying muscle layer. And interestingly, uh, because the base preserved, the margins again came back to be clear. Luckily, it came back to be normal severe disease. And again, I believe this procedure really ensured a complete resection in this case. When you're really dealing with big tumors, uh, we may need some special ways to extract the tumor. Um, more so later, but um, it's not probably not the best approach because there's, again, the risk of seeding. Uh, but you can also use endobags. And the other thing is when you use the morselator scope, the channel is actually quite big. You can actually use the laparoscopic instrument to insert through the morselator scope and try to grab the tumor with a good bite and then take it out. And this is what I meant, morselator uh, scope together with laparoscopic instruments. You can insert this instrument through the channel and then have a good bite and then try to take the tumor in one piece. And it's actually quite a good maneuver to adopt. I think in summary, um, um, ombla resection aims to ensure a complete local resection and to minimize the risk of tumor implantation. I think we have enough evidence and experience to say that it's safe and technically feasible for tumors less than three centimeter. For big tumors, it is challenging. There are different methods to facilitate tumor extraction. But I think uh, at the end of the day, uh, even for big tumors, even we need, if we need to take it out in multiple um, fragments, if we excise it in one piece during the procedure, at least we can ensure a complete resection, which is still very important in the case of non-muscular failure disease. But of course, at the end of the day, it's, just, it's not just about experience. We need high quality trials to prove its value before it be adopted routinely um, in a generalized manner. To end my talk, if you're interested in this procedure, I would strongly encourage you to read about this international collaborative consensus statement, which was just published last year in European Urology. Basically, we try to gather the opinion um, from experts around the world who try to define what is considered the standard way of doing the procedure, what is the best case selection, uh, how should we uh, document the, the operation record, how should we assess the, the specimen, how should we manage the patient after ombla resection, what are the important outcome measures and patients undergoing ombla resection, et cetera. And we hope this statement will serve as a good reference for people who would like to adopt on the resection in their clinic practice. And uh, I hope um, my talk will be able to inspire you that we certainly need to resect the tumor in a better way. And I still believe that a good resection is one of the most important ways 
to optimize the cancer control in the case of normal cell invasive bladder cancer. And by this, I would like to thank um, the, um, the organizing community once again for the invitation, and I hope you have enjoyed the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jeremy. That was an excellent talk on on block resection techniques, and it's fascinating to see uh, these new techniques that are available for tumor resection. I'd like to now